Sorry. Quick question. Sorry. Yes. You got my USB? No. Sorry. Yes. It was on my table. No, I did not take it. I didn't take it. I had a blue one on the table. No, I don't take it. You sure? Yes. Derek, Lorenzo, yes. got a question for you. Yes. <laughs> Question. Yeah. Did you put this banana on my bed? No. Because I saw Frozone on my bed eating a banana. That means that you were the one eating the banana with Frozone. What? No. Did you eat the banana? No. In my room? No. No. Who did it? I don't know. Maybe. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Then you'll be able to see. Hey. Hey. Not the same. Hey, that's a poppy. That's a pops. Can you please brush behind his ears? Sorry. Brush out the the maddedness. He's got to go to the groomers, and they're gonna say he's too. When are you gonna make a groomer appointment? As soon as you get these out. Okay, I'm gonna brush him right now. So you're gonna make it tomorrow. He likes that. Well, that's a lot of water. Mm-hmm. If I brush him. Mm-hmm. Seriously? Mm-hmm. Oliver. When can I get my new desk chair? Mm -hmm. You were supposed to have been ordered that. Yeah, but you, the, someone called you and... That was two weeks right, ago. <laughs> that was right before I called you. Like, did you cut your hair? Mm -mm. That looks different. What did you do? I just curled it a little more. Can we talk? I'm Derek. And I'm Sonia. Thank you for watching. Today's episode is... Five unanswered questions that are asked in marriage. So can we talk? So questions. Everyone gets bombarded with questions every day, all day long. Like, why are you wearing those headphones? Why am I wearing these headphones? I don't know why he's wearing those headphones. So I have an answer. Okay. It's not going to make any sense to you. Okay. Thus the questions that are annoying. So <laughs> that question wasn't annoying actually. That was, that was a legitimate question and, and our, our point about me wearing these headphones, I have a reason for it, which I'll share later. But that's, a, that's an example of just questions and especially in marriage. You know, all day long, you know, kids, there's stuff on the floor, on the stairs. Who put this on the stairs? Mm -hmm. Of course, you'll get three different answers. <laughs> After you stepped on it. <laughs> questions about what time are you coming to pick me up? Mm -hmm. Questions. Questions about what time is your haircut appointment? Questions. What and are we having for dinner? Questions. And where so, are we going to church? Yeah, where are we going to church? I don't know. <laughs> Staying home? <laughs> <laughs> no, we got to be at West End. Oh, yeah, we do. So, <laughs> so, so, you know, I was watching the news and um, Facebook. Facebook, uh, Zuckerman, is that his name? Facebook CEO, he was being questioned at the Senate hearings. Um, and he was sitting there being bombarded with questions, mm. and he was sweating and drinking water. Mm -hmm. So questions bring a lot of pressure, but also questions put you in a position where you may wanna lie, or based on how you feel, you may wanna 
uh, come up with a answer that uh, is coming from uh, an emotion. Uh, so it all depends on the question. It depends on who's asking. Uh -huh. But over the past 20 years, we've been asked a whole bunch of questions about marriage. You didn't like my questions back in the day. I hated Sonia's questions back in the day. I mean, she asked me questions about I mean, I was so intrigued. I was intrigued by you. Why'd you have to get up in my face? <laughs> <laughs> I was intrigued. Really? When I say the word intrigued, I feel like coming closer. Uh, you're going to get it. You get. I was intrigued. You're about to get it. Bring it. Oh. oh. Slow down. <laughs> Watch, Watch it now. Watch it now. <laughs> now Watch yourself. Watch it now. <laughs> oh, Help we are out. in a silly, silly mood today. So the questions that Sonia asked me, they were annoying. They, they were, were questions that wanted. I wanted to know your core, and I wanted to know parts about you that you wouldn't ordinarily share that a question would be required to get that kind of information right mm -hmm. and i understand now why you asked those questions but mm -hmm. back then they it intimidated you it did because i think derek thought that there was a right or wrong answer to my questions and there wasn't it was just whatever it was so, tri so triggers, triggers, <laughs> triggers, questions trigger a response. And so there are a lot of questions that couples have asked us that have been unanswered uh -huh. or they have been answered and the answer wasn't good enough for them. And we don't have all the answers to the questions. I mean, we were told that we don't know anything. Who, who are we? <laughs> <laughs> we were told uh, we're not experts. We're, we don't know nothing. <laughs> Twenty-four years of marriage. Who told you what you know about what? marriage? Yeah. Uh, that's you need okay. To stop it. That's okay. They made me watch it. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so we we have a little bit of knowledge, just a little bit, to help answer some of these questions. So here are the five most unanswered questions in marriages that we have been presented. Mm -hmm. Question number one. Why did God do this to me? Make my marriage like this. <laughs> so we've heard that a thousand and one times. Mm -mm -mm. God was responsible for the uh, issues in your marriage. And so now you're saying it's God's fault. It's a real legitimate question because so many people ask that question when their marriage isn't going well. And I said this to people when they ask this question, God gives us free choice. He gives us free reign, just like he did Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we don't choose the right partner or we're not the right partner. And then we want to blame God. And, mm -hmm. and most of the time people did not get permission from God or hear from God before they decided to get So married. I'm going to add another part to that question. Is it God's will for them to stay in that marriage? I believe that if God thought that that marriage would destroy them, he would shut it down. Because Derek and I have seen God shut weddings down. He has struck lightning. He has caused deaths. He has sh caused floods where people could not get married. He stopped planes from taking off. I mean, we've seen God shut down marriages. So my theory is if he really believed that it was to your eternal detriment, he would shut it down. If you are married and he didn't shut it down, he's permitting it. Doesn't mean it was his perfect will for you, but he's yeah. permitting it. He's permitting it because he can still use it to save you. Right. We're not in a position to, to question what God does. I was reading in Isaiah, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. And that's God talking. God is saying you have no... I was just reading that too. Yeah. Isaiah 55. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. I'm watching you. And Why do you have on those headphones? So I want to answer that question. So <laughs> can you hear me? Can you hear me with the little baby? Oh, oh, oh. Ears? Are you going to go there? Because okay. I could say you got I, I, some I, I, extra I, I, large headphones to fit the dome. Her ears are so tiny that I got to take. Hello. <laughs> so silly. Look at can you ears. stay focused? Okay. So look. Look at the head. How come we talk about God right now? Isaiah. <laughs> So check this out. You know, woke up Oliver. God, God, we can't even begin to understand his thoughts on a serious note. No, that's true. We can't even understand his thoughts and his ways. And when things take place, you just have to go to that spiritual place of just you and God. 
and to find and search for that answer. But I do know this, you know, I was talking to someone and we were talking about how women have gotten pregnant and, and they question, you know, why do I get pregnant and what happened and those kind of things and I don't want the baby. But then they say, I'm going to take, I'm going to keep the baby and we want to nurture and love and pray over this baby. And that baby is, is now uh, a, a PhD in a pharmaceutical company just running things 20 years later. And at that moment, that person probably questioned, was this God's will to keep this baby? Mm. And now that baby is now an adult, just, just changing the world. And so we have to be very careful to question mm -hmm. and decide on what God's will is, because sometimes we don't know. We try to fit it into that that puzzle that that makes us feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. So to answer the question, that's a relationship answer. There, mm -hmm. that's that's a relationship. You know, we we were kind of given some perspectives, but really that's a relationship between you and God. And God speaks very clearly and loudly to what you're asking him. But what I do know, even though that is valid, is that God did not do something to somebody oh, yeah. to get married. Right. He didn't do that to no. you. You did that. Yeah, you grown for. You said I do got <laughs> married. So all right, next question. Should we have same sex friends? Oh, this is a good question. Same sex this friends. This is a good question. This means should I have no, it should be opposite sex friends. Opposite sex. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Opposite sex. Yeah, your dyslexia just showed yeah, up. I got dyslexia, yeah. for real. No joke. So should we have Thank opposite you. sex friends? Meaning, should I have male friends that I knew before Derek and still be close to them? Well, here's my theory. If they can be friends with Derek, yes. Absolutely. Right. But if they cannot be friends with Derek, here's the thing. Marriage is already hard. <laughs> yeah. And in one of our vlogs, I talk about the theory of emotional relativity, emotional energy. And wherever you put your emotional energy is where it bears the most fruit. Right. So I don't know how people honestly manage to have successful, healthy marriages while pursuing other relationships with the opposite sex. It's just, to me, it's just so exhausting. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just can't put the two together because it takes me all of my energy to be the wife that God wants me to be to Derek. I honestly can't imagine having a whole lot of conversations with opposite sex friends. What am I talking about? What are, what are they offering me? Right. <laughs> Unless they're going to pay some bills. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Grab a bill. Be I just Grab, think the energy bill. of marriage. It's, and I know that much. this is controversial. This is so controversial. Y'all going to be mad. Y'all going to be sending messages. I know. But here's the thing. To become one, that to me means in every aspect of our lives. And people say, well, you have to have your individuality. But here's the thing. Yes, if you have a friend that can be friend your husband or your wife, then you're still one. If it caused distress, duress, distress on the other spouse, then absolutely not. Oh, in yeah. With yeah, saying, absolutely. I mean, if the spouse, for whatever reason, for whatever reason, y'all should have worked that out before y'all got married. Mm -hmm. But you know, even well, because for... Derek and I, when we got married, opposite sex friends came to our wedding. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Some of my male friends came to our wedding. Mm -hmm. Some of Derek's female friends came to there was our a wedding. A lot of them, like fifty. Who of them. was that? They were just following. Them. They just I man don't. So, but the <laughs> thing about it is, we introduced uh, those friends to each other when we were dating. Right. And they stayed our friends. So hear me really clearly. We're not telling you to ex your, your friends, they, they, especially if they were good people. But after you get married, you need to reposition where they fall in your life. Right. Okay. Especially if it's causing conflict and duress, like Derek said, to your, to I your think, spouse. I think, good point. Thank you. I think for the husband to have a female friend, it's, it's even more challenging because you're dealing with um, scripture. And it talks about, you know, this woman who you don't catch her with your eyelids. You don't look at her in her eyes. And, and once that happens, it's the, it's, the, it's the journey to the heart. And if you have a marriage that is, is going through some things and, and the male mm -hmm. has a female friend, 
we're not strong enough to separate the emotional ties that comes with that. Okay. That's from a man. Boom. Oh. Next okay. question. <laughs> Why you got to throw the cards like that? That's, you know, the old school. Oh, okay. And, okay. You know, like okay. Should we have joint bank accounts? That's a common question. I don't, I, I don't imagine how, well, you know, okay, so you guys know we do the four building blocks of intimacy. That's in season one. And we talk about emotional intimacy, spiritual intimacy, financial intimacy, and sexual intimacy. So financial intimacy is the third of our four building blocks. And I believe that joint bank accounts reflects your emotional and your spiritual oneness with each other. Hmm. If you're not able to have a joint bank account, somewhere along the line, there's no trust or there's a spiritual difference in how what you believe you should do with money as far as temperance. Right. And that means that you're not spirit you're not financially um, intimate. Right. In addition to money because we're talking about joint bank accounts, mm -hmm. money has uh, different meanings for different people. True. So money could be power for some for fun for another person. Security, Security for some. Security for some. Mm -hmm. uh, and yes. so for me, it meant power. If I had it, I'm spending it. Mm -hmm. And Sonya's was security. Mm -hmm. If she had it, she's going to make sure she's going to save it. Mm -hmm. So at that time, I destroyed that joint bank account because we weren't emotionally intimate first. We didn't know what money meant to us and how it made she us feel. She wasn't raised in the projects, mm -hmm. eating mayonnaise sandwiches, eating, you know, the bologna that's fried and understand that we had to struggle our whole life. And we had to... Okay. <laughs> so for me, when I got older, I'm going to buy and get, and so that for me is power. So we're getting sidetracked. And so I think, before you throw the card, and I think the reason that a lot of couples don't do the joint bank account is because they're avoiding that type of intimacy. Right. They just don't want to okay. be bothered with it. It's too stressful for some. Um, it, it's too involved emotionally. So a lot of couples ignore it. It gets neglected. Right. And so they handle it by just everybody getting your, just your single individual bank accounts and, and that's fine. Right. But here's the thing. When you're married in, in the eyes of the law, you're, you're held liable for your spouse's <laughs> assets and liabilities. Right. And the, in the eyes of the law, if your spouse dies, they're coming to you. They're looking at you for your spouse's estate because they're going to assume that's your estate. Right. So if the state sees it, if the law sees it, God sees it, why don't we see it as, as joint, as necessary? So to answer, the, it's best to have one if you're emotionally connected intimately. It works. It really works. If you're I, emotionally I, and spiritually intimate. Yeah, because I need to be able to get into that bank account and be able to understand how to, to, to navigate the money and vice versa. Yeah, so. there was a wife whose husband died and she couldn't even access his funds to funeralize him. It went to probate right. before she could even um, get access to the money and she had to funeralize him. And mm -hmm. they had no connection to their money whatsoever. Right. But everybody expected her to bury him. They weren't financially intimate and that's unfortunate. So be emotionally connected first, mm -hmm. and then work out the money. <laughs> Number four, do we need to sit together in church? Okay, you take that one. What kind of question is that? That's a question that comes up. People come up with it, it all is, the time. The answer simple, yes. Yeah. Your marriage is a spiritual union. Mm -hmm. You got in front of God and all those folk, maybe it was just two people or 500 people, but you said... I do. Mm -hmm. The two becomes one flesh. That means that you've made a decision spiritually to have that marriage blessed. And God said, okay. So going to church. Now, there's some situations, you know, you may be in a different ministry. You've got to get there. Early. We're not talking about those kind of things. Work right. that thing out. Right, right, right. Schedules. That's, we're not talking about. We're just talking about just some married folk. They just are not going to church together. For whatever reason, other than those ministerial reasons, but we just believe that it's, things happen when you're sitting together in church. Yeah. It's like when you have a rough week individually, and then you have a, a rough week collectively, 
and then you get into the vehicle and we've had some fights in the car going to church. Some of y'all had them. We got it. <laughs> and you make it in top, inside the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a scripture mm -hmm. that's going to be applicable to say, hey. Remember, remember when we were first married yeah. and we went to church hot. We were not talking. It was a bad argument all the way to church. Mm -hmm. And then we got to church. We barely sat next to each other. And then our pastor started the, the morning with, turn to your neighbor and tell them you love them. I'm like, are you serious right now? <laughs> and we looked at each other. We were like, mm -hmm. and then we just busted out laughing. Yeah. And it really did bring some levity the Holy Spirit, to the situation. The Holy Spirit, it just, things mm -hmm. happen, you know, a, a, a song, a, a scripture, a sermon. And you're convicted by whatever, to, if your heart is not hardened, mm -hmm. you're convicted and you say, man, that was for us. Mm -hmm. And then you're able to talk about it and then go home and talk about it. And then, so yes, we recommend that you find a way to sit together in church. And I know there's some other issues preventing husband and wife even to go to church together. True, true. There, there, uh, we do know that there's other circumstances in which prevents husband and wife to even go to church together. Mm -hmm. um, well, and worshiping together is another form of spiritual intimacy. Yes. So you experience some intimate spiritual things with each other when you're in the Last sanctuary question. together. What if they don't love me? How I need to be loved. How I need to be loved. Hmm. Well, you know, there's so many different ways to communicate that. You know, Gary Chapman wrote a book on the five love languages. That's a really good book to start with because we all have different love languages. So how we need to be loved does not look the same. And that's something that you that requires a conversation. Um, and I don't know if the people that ask that question know how to describe it, but I know that women and men receive love differently. Right. right. And they receive love differently based on how they received love growing up. Yeah, I think... I think the, um, the challenge is defining love, uh, defining love and, and looking into the scriptures about love in, in Corinthians 13, uh, really dissecting that, but then mm -hmm. understanding that you came to the marriage with rules on how you wanted to be loved. Yeah. We come, we come into marriage with rules on how we want to be loved. Mm -hmm. If we were abused, mm -hmm. we want to get a certain kind of love mm -hmm. by that spouse. Mm -hmm. If we were neglected, if we were left alone, if we were in a previous marriage that was horrific, mm -hmm. if, if, if we just gotten married and we weren't married before. So we come into the marriage, we don't talk about the rules that we come, we just come into it. And what happens after the honeymoon period is over, those expectations of what you are receiving, they're no longer there because the, the marriage life comes. Right. The bills come. And right. The disagreements come and, and, and all these other factors that take place. So now the perception and the interpretation is that they don't love me. Right. Well, there was not a conversation about how you really wanted to be loved. Right. And so now you have to deal with going back to dealing with, you know, how did I really want to be loved? And was that a... I like to use this, a figmentation of my imagination. Right. Yeah. And I would say so. being able to say, I feel most loved by you when you do acts of service for me. I feel most loved by you when you touch me. I feel most loved by you when you say positive things to me. And I think that's a, the first step in being able to communicate that to someone. And yeah. now whether they can do it or not is another conversation. But I think you've got to be able to convey to your spouse what, what love looks like. Right. And there's a lot of factors. And this is a loaded question. Mm -hmm. You know, the waters are deep because mm -hmm. there could have been some hurt, some, some trust issues, some other things mm -hmm. that may have uh, impacted the marriage over time. And so the love, the feeling of love and that love is now diminished mm. because there's resentment and there's hurt and there's just, okay, I'm going to be content. I'm not going to mm -hmm. divorce you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be content and just kind of, you know, move on. So, yeah. All right. So this was a, a good. See, you were talking about pet peeves. Just the idea of those papers being all over the floor. Is and a I'm going to pick them up. I know you are. I know. Pick them up. So, so you gonna tell me why you got the heads, heads, yeah, headphones yeah, yeah. on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna tell you why. So look, um, these headphones are like awesome. This has nothing to do with the five unanswered questions about marriage at all. Nothing oh, at all. Okay. Yeah, 
But you know, I've always wanted to end our vlogs and just blast this music in my ear. You know? Well, why are you the blasting and nobody else can hear it? Okay. Come on, work with me, honey. And that's why I have the headphones on. You just wanted to blast our theme song? I just wanted to blast the theme song. So, <laughs> thank you for watching. We Don't be intimidated by questions. Yeah, questions, questions are good. Questions are good. Questions yeah. give you information about the one you love. Absolutely. Or your intended love for mm. those that are single. Ask them, ask them, ask them. Some of you guys did ask about those questions that Derek talked about last week. The 62 unanswered questions. Actually, 72 now. 70. Derek added 10 more. And thank you, Miss Bunny, for <laughs> checking in what you checked. Shout <laughs> out to you. You took care of it. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. Um, Thanks for watching. Yeah. So if you have, actually, if you have questions about anything other than what we covered, go ahead and put it in the, in the comments of this video. Yes. And we'll be more than happy to try to answer. We didn't kind of, we kind of put it out there but we really mm -hmm. didn't go into depth so if you we have, have other questions, questions too so, so we can come back again yeah. and do part two and three yeah but we wanted to start with the five most common questions asked of us so now that you know the answers what, what you're, you're gonna, gonna do, do with, with it? it thank you for watching until next time take good care of yourself bye